As I've mentioned before in other videos, I'm a dog groomer by trade outside of YouTube. I do both pet and show dog grooming, and while I haven't been doing it as long as some others, still being quite young, I've come to learn a lot about dogs and people because of it. Dog grooming isn't a job for everyone, and it certainly does not bode well for those who do not like physical labor, but it's a job that keeps me on my feet at any given time, something I like, having something to do. However, while a majority of the public assume dog grooming is just clippers and poodles, it's much more than that. Much more. And in my line of work, you will see things. You will see some real sh both physically and metaphorically, of course. You will see things that you do not agree with. You will certainly meet people you do not see eye to eye with. You will also see some depressing stuff and stuff that will make you angry, but you'll also see some joyous stuff. This job is a labor of love and has many stories. Aside from emotional, however, you will also encounter controversy in some way or another. I won't go into specifics here, but I think one of the most controversial things in, not just dog grooming, but dog ownership in general, is creative dog grooming. You know, dyes, colors, and fancy patterns. And the moment one person sees a colored dog on the internet, they flip out. I've seen groomers getting called abusive or people saying that the dog must think it looks ridiculous. And it pains me so much because this is a labor of love groomers should take pride in, not have to hide. In this episode, I'm letting out the truth and why I am here to tell you that creative grooming is not abuse and farther from the truth, as well as what real dog abuse is in terms of grooming, what real neglect is, and what stuff I have to see. I will also tell you now, the swear filter is off, so prepare for the bar- Dog grooming by definition is the act of keeping the skin and coat in a clean, healthy, balanced state. It also involves the maintenance of the teeth, ears, and nails. Dog grooming is essential for every dog out there. While some dogs don't have long fur that needs to be clipped down, all dogs have ears, teeth, nails, and skin. Dog grooming isn't a luxury, it's a requirement for dog ownership. I'ma repeat that. This is not a luxury, it is a requirement. I just want to put that out there for those that think it's just for poodles. The American Kennel Club even says, and I quote, When you think about caring for your dog's well-being, your thoughts might instinctively turn towards healthy foods, exercise, and vet's visits, but grooming is just as important, quote. As a dog groomer, I've seen some dogs in conditions who so desperately needed grooming, I've jumped into a conversation with people on walks and introduced myself. And by the way, it is near impossible for me to not judge a dog's condition when I'm out walking and I see one. I always get OCD when I see toe tufts. Toe tufts! Any groomer out there knows what I mean. I must make it look neat. And de-shedding. Oh boy, the de-shedding blowouts. Ah! <clears throat> okay, back to what I was saying. And of course, there are dogs whose owners love to splurge on their dog's grooming, asking for everything from mud treatments to bows to bandanas to nail polish. <laughs> oh, come on. I do not need this right now. Ugh. Okay, fine. You know what? It's time I talk about this. Creative grooming. Dyes, nail polish, sprays, sparkles, scissors, you name it, everyone in the general public seems to hate it. I see so many groomers getting called animal abusers for doing so much as coloring a poodle tail. And heck, I've seen groomers who have had the police and animal control show up at their shop's door because of this. In some places, it's completely outlawed and it's ridiculous. Well, I'm gonna change some minds if it's the last thing I do. Here it goes. I'm showing you that this is anything but abusive and what really is abusive and cruel for dogs. So creative dog grooming. On the surface, it doesn't seem all that bad, it's just color. But so many people call out dogs with color on them, claiming abuse, claiming that the skin's gonna burn, claiming the dog must feel ridiculous, claiming dogs don't like grooming, claiming the dog's a bait dog. Well, we're gonna cover all these. Starting this off, the claims of abuse via the skin or fur burning. 
These come from people who supposedly had their dogs died and the fur was burnt or the skin was burned or it decayed and the skin never came back or yada yada yada. Well, here's a news flash for all of you. Be careful what you use. Pretty much 9.9 .9 out of 10 dogs who had their fur burnt, skin burned, whatever, from dog dye often had the wrong products used on them or inexperienced people trying to apply them. You never, and I mean never, use human products on dogs. Time for a little science, I promise, only a little. A human's pH balance is 5.5 to 5.6. Dogs, on the other hand, are 6.2 to 7.4, leaving them much more neutral compared to humans. It's acidity versus alkalinity. The topmost layer of skin has a thin layer of what's called the acid mantle, which protects the topmost layer of skin from things like viruses and bacteria. It also helps keep the body hydrated by absorbing water and reducing evaporation. When we bathe, that mantle is washed away. Most soaps and shampoos have moisturizers to protect the skin until the mantle comes back. In order for the mantle to do its job, a proper balance of acidity and alkalinity must be held. This is where the issues arise. Say you use human shampoo on a dog, well that's going to disrupt the acid mantle by a large margin, leaving your dog's skin much more dry, flaky, and leaving them more open to viruses. Plus the dry skin will initiate scratching, which can lead to abrasions. Use it long enough, and you'll have some big problems on your hands. Okay, back from science. That shows enough as it is. Using human products on dogs ruins the coat, and this is why there are dog-specific shampoos and conditioners. Obviously, human dye is never intended to be used on animals, so if you do that, you're kind of causing the problem already. Also, you shouldn't try to dye unless you know what you're doing. Different brands have different rules and directions, and messing up can cause a lot more issues than just a bad hair day. Pet-safe dyes have no harmful chemicals in them and are almost always plant-based food coloring, which is non-toxic even if the dog ingests it. That covers the aspect of physical harm to a dog. Like I said, it usually comes from people using the wrong products. You wouldn't use cat flea treatment on a dog, don't use human stuff on a dog. Some people will say dogs have allergic reactions to dye, but that's a very small percentage. Remember, probably only 0.1% of dogs will have a real allergic reaction to dye. Otherwise, it was probably the wrong product being used or products being used incorrectly. Never do grooming if you are at all unsure about something. If you want a colored dog, go seek out a professional groomer unless you are 100% sure you know what you're doing. Second point here, the claims of dogs not liking grooming. Have any of you been to a dog show? Quite a change of subject, I know, but if you haven't, go to one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it if only for the dogs or shopping, but I want you to go. It's a fun activity to even just watch. What's something you see at a dog show? Tables with dogs on them, being brushed, combed, washed, whatever. Okay, now, does this dog look like it's trying to run, bite, attack someone, get off the table, run away, anything of that nature? What about this one? Or this one? No, they aren't. Heck, some don't even need a grooming loop or arm because their dogs are so well behaved. They're just standing there perfectly and it shocks the average pet owners and many think that the dogs are drugged or something so that way they can't fight it. I'll tell you right now, it's not that the dogs are drugged or anything like people think, it's called training. It's not that the dogs hate grooming. The thing everyone forgets is training. Train a dog as a puppy to enjoy being on the table, being brushed, being near loud dryers, being touched on the nails from a young age, and they don't fight. Dogs often love being groomed. It's one-on-one -on -one attention time. They don't see the brush as a brush. They see it as I'm being pet, and dogs love attention. Show the dog from a young age to enjoy the process, and they don't fight it. That's why show dogs are so well behaved. They know to stand still to get it done faster. They love the attention. These dogs aren't drugged or anything, they're just trained well. Very well. And grooming desensitization is one of the most overlooked things of owning a puppy, and that makes us groomers have to deal with wiggling dogs and them biting. Dogs who don't like grooming are ones who don't like attention. Any average dog would love grooming if you show them it can be a great experience. Dogs love grooming and any claims that they don't are from people who are either lying or own dogs themselves who don't like attention. 
for one reason or another. Next claim, the fact that coloring means it's a bait dog. This is even more stupid than the previous ones because dogs don't see color. There are two claims in this, color used to make dogs more aggressive and color used to keep track of bait dog. First, let's use color in order to keep track. In dog fighting, some dogs are used solely to be dummies for the fighting dogs to attack, i.e. bait. This claim of color is because some bait dogs are painted in order to keep track of them. Makes sense. Bait dogs aren't named because people who do dog fighting don't care enough about the bait dogs. Oftentimes, they're colored with spray paint for this reason, in order to help keep track of. However, most bait animals aren't even dogs. Oftentimes, they are cats. This is because cats are much easier to find, less likely to fight back against dogs, and they're smaller, making them easier to handle, and thus making them better bait animals. If you search up bait animal on Google, some of the first images that show animals being colored are cats, and hardly any are dogs. So the claim of color to keep track of bait dogs? It may be true, but often dogs aren't the bait here. The other claim I've heard but have not been able to find reputable evidence of, still a thought I would bring up though, color used to make a dog act more aggressive. Oftentimes, people who do dog fighting, which is pretty much illegal everywhere nowadays, color on the dogs in order to make the dog more aggressive. This would make sense, color empowers emotions. Except that would be the case if dogs aren't colorblind. Dogs don't have the same vision as us. While it's not black and white, they don't have nearly as many color receptors as we do. They can see shades of blue, but other than that they can't tell the rest of the spectrum apart. This is why if you throw a red toy into the green grass, your dog gets confused and you think it, they're stupid because they can't find it. The reason you can see it is because your ancestors spent thousands of years picking red berries off of green tree leaves. Meanwhile, a dog's much better ancestors used those thousands of years to develop sight that picks up the slightest movements to hunt prey. So what does this have to do with bait dogs? Well, what would a dog who's colorblind care if a dog is colored red? They wouldn't. Color doesn't mean anything to dogs. They can't see it, so to them, red looks no different than white, green, orange, whatever. That's why most people don't even bother coloring bait dogs, especially in the extravagant ways you will see creative groomers do. For bait dogs, a small splot of spray paint is probably it. Spray paint splotches are far different than the fluffed up, multicolored blues, purples, etc. you see creative groomers use. But color to make them more aggressive? No, not by a long shot. And the final argument, the dog must think it looks ridiculous. <laughs> what? The dog must think it looks ridiculous? I take back what I said before. This is the most far-fetched one of them all. Okay, okay, let me say something. I'm gonna head back on what I said before. Okay, first off, dogs are colorblind, so they wouldn't care. Red on a white dog still looks like the same to a dog. If a poodle is pink, they don't care. They wouldn't care if they were blue, gray, and ocarine. Second, when it's being done, it's attention, and dogs love attention. See the show dog above, train well, and the dogs don't fight grooming. And last, the dogs will get attention from the public. Think about it. If you saw a pink poodle, wouldn't you want to go pet it? I sure would. The dog will get attention. But none of those matter because it doesn't mean anything to the dog. The real issue here is humanizing dogs. You assume dogs have the same emotions and see the world as we do, but you know what they say about assuming it makes an ass out of you and me. Dogs are dogs for a reason. They don't see, feel, think, or smell the world like we do. We see beef and pork as two different things with different tastes. To dogs, food is food. If it provides nutrients, they don't care. They can't recognize something as beef or pork individually. They only see it as pleasant, indifferent, or unpleasant. Dogs don't see the world like we do. They don't see red as a fiery passion. So stop giving them human emotions and humanizing him. They don't know about the economy. They don't know what school is. Police dogs don't know they're police dogs. They just think, if I attack the guy with a sleeve on, I get praise. I like praise. They don't know they're fighting for the law. They do not see the world as we do. 
Dogs are dogs, not humans, and they do not know the world like we do. Oh boy, that was a lot. I got off on a bit of a tangent there in a lot of these. Oh, what's this? You're still not convinced? You're still gonna say that creative dog grooming is cruel. Hm. Don't worry, I have a little something else. Something else that is true. Something else that is real dog abuse. Real neglect, real abuse. Take a look at this. Or this. Or maybe this one? Possibly these? Or any of these? If you think coloring dogs is still cruel and abusive after you see this, you must have a dog who probably looks like one of these canines, because this is far worse than color. I ask you, what is worse? A clean, matte-free, and colored coat, or a pelleted, reeking of pee, uncolored coat? If you said the first one, you should go return your dog from where you found it. Look at these images of dogs who are solid pelts that have to be shorn like a sheep. And look at this dog who's colored, wagging their tail, happy. Neglect of a dog's coat causes so many issues, from circulation to bacteria growth to improper walking. And this happens way more often than it should. Way more often. It is awful I, that I have to witness and clean up after your lazy ass. Dog groomers are far too common for once a year grooms. Dog groomers are willing to work with you if you can't afford it. A true dog groomer cares about the dog's well-being over money. It is awful I have to see this in my line of work. Dogs with skin so tight it cuts off circulation. Hematomas from tightly matted ears that cause blood vessels to break. Poop from weeks, caked onto the rear, making its way into the dog's system. Ingrown nails that curve back into the paw pad that cause difficulty walking. A coat that smells of piss so much you could smell it from a while away. What about this poor dog, who was 10 years old, never once had a haircut before, and his skin was so tightly matted, his paw had to be amputated because it lost circulation and died. Look at those teeth, look at the paw, look at that skin. That is neglect, that is abuse, not color, that is. Mats cause pain, discomfort, and look awful. They cause hot spots, they cause circulation issues of blood, and they catch water to make it a nice, hot, moist area for bacteria to grow. Coloring a dog is far from abuse. Dogs who are colored are loved. These dogs enjoy their grooming, enjoy their attention. The owners of these dogs care, and that's why they are willing to pay the money for this. These dogs are happy, matte-free, sweet-smelling, and have loving families. Dogs who go months or even years without a haircut are not. What is abuse is going a year without a haircut. I dare any of you who are watching this video to go an entire year without brushing or even washing your hair and see what happens. <laughs> you you want to know something something funny the funniest most hysterical thing about being a dog groomer is seeing this the very same people who claim coloring dogs is cruel often have dogs that look like this obese and matted to the skin it's ironic and I love it. I know right now as I'm recording my voice that people probably turned off the video because they are one of those people. One of those hate color but has a solid pelted dog. They know what I'm saying is true and they don't want to believe it. They know what I just said is true but they don't want to hear my nonsense. I just know someone is.
There is no excuse for this. Dog groomers are plentiful, even in the most remote areas. Some even come to you. As for those that claim it's too expensive, dog groomers love their animals and care about dogs. They want to see them happy and healthy. They don't care about the price tag. Dog groomers are far more willing to work with you in order to make sure your dog is happy and clean. We don't make much, but we still put the dogs before ourselves. That's true caring and love. I've charged someone a full groom for only $15 who lived an hour away from me because they had gotten laid off and didn't have anything. And that $15 was only to cover for the gasoline for me to travel to them. There are plenty of other stories out there like mine. We care for your dogs, and nothing disgusts a groomer more than seeing blatant neglect. That's when we get angry, depressed, and worrisome. That's when we get bad raps. That's when your neglect makes us look bad because we have to shave your dog bald. It is depressing I have to hear this stuff. My job is a labor of love, and the last thing I want to hear is someone calling me out for coloring a dog. Your neglect, and we have to take the fall. Maybe pick up some responsibility when you come to pick up your bald dog from me and think about what your dog has to go through when being a matted pelt and what rap I have to tolerate because of your neglect. So I ask you all one more time, what is really abuse here? Oh boy, that took way longer than it should have. <laughs> I've been at this for three weeks now. Extra special thanks to those who let me borrow pictures and videos to use for this. All the pictures and videos came from people and groups I'm in on Facebook or Facebook friends that I have and know in person. So they have their names from Facebook here. Some wished to remain anonymous and those people I'm gonna respect your wish, so... Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video.